Welcome, or welcome back. Maybe you found this video because Akuma piqued your interest in Street Fighter 6, or maybe it was Evo. Either way, welcome. My intention with this video series is to investigate the structure of how ranked it is at the end of season one and the beginning of season two. A lot of things have changed since launch, a lot of the way that characters play are different. Um, I just like to go over what I've noticed and um, help you to, to rank up. You know, a lot of the information that's previously available, people know of, you know, so I would just like to go over some things that I, I viewed in the ranks as of recent and try and deliver this information to you uh, to help you get better. I started out with just thinking about doing rookie, but really rookie iron and bronze are all like three thirds of a whole, you know, like a, a lot of the, the people just play the same up until about silver. But um, so I'll be looking at that through this video in particular, how rookie the, the, the problems that I've seen that rookies, um, the iron people and the bronze people have. With that being said, I'd like to go over what I've noticed. The first tip that I have is just to block. 95% of the players in this range of ranks don't know how to hold back to protect themselves whatsoever. And I get the whole meme, I didn't pay $60 to block, but did you pay $60 to lose? Understanding that some of the players in these ranks do whatever they can, whenever they want to, with no regards for their own personal safety, understanding buttons and frames, or even when to jump. Like they're, they're literally just throwing the game away if you know how to block. Blocking the right move, you can mash whatever buttons you want and you can you can play the game however you want to. When you understand how vital blocking is and how you can properly punish almost everything your opponent does when you do block, you'll start respecting the block button more and utilizing it to its full potential. The second tip that I have is to properly understand the combos that you want to do. And from my experience, there are about five combos that you want to use um, in any given match, like five, five different kinds. You know, you want your big flashy jump in combo where you dump all your meter and your drive gauge, you know, the 70% clip that you saw on Twitter, you want that in your back pocket. You also want to have a combo that does decent damage that doesn't use any drive gauge or any meter, you know, just in case you're in the corner, you find yourself mashing something, uh, or your opponent makes a mistake, but your drive gauge is out and you want to use, save your uh, meter, your super meter for uh, a reversal super. You want your basic mash combo, you know, your jab, jab, jab. Um, you want a side switch combo if that pertains to your character. Some characters can do it easier than, than others. And then you want your big punish counter combo. Um, and this is typically used when you um, accidentally bait out and, and I use accidentally because I don't think anybody in rookie iron or bronze is doing this when you bait out a, an opponent super and they miss or you block or something like that so you want to have something there in the event that um that this happens the third tip that I have is knowing when to press appropriate buttons in the appropriate situation now, I'm not telling you that you need to be Daigo, you don't need to be Mena, Punk, Ending Walker, Brian F, Rob TV, or any of the streamers that you watch, or any of the people that compete. But there are also times where you shouldn't be pressing the button given the situation that you're in. Um, and this isn't, this doesn't mean that you have to, you know, hop into the lab five hours a day and understand frame data, but. Um, there are just times where you don't press this unless it's appropriate, you know, and there, there are times that you can press more appropriate buttons more often uh, given the level of safety that they have as opposed to, you know, other things. Because if you press a standing roundhouse, you know, close range, you're going to eat a combo because you were just pressing buttons. So um, it, it's all about understanding, like, the bigger the button, the more space that you want to have between you and your opponent um, so that they can still hit, but that you're also not in as much danger as um, possible.
you'll see this Ed pressing buttons and then doing specials, but he's not canceling into them, which means I have the opportunity to interrupt. Um, once you start wanting to get better, you'll start doing things that make a little bit more sense instead of just doing things because you want to do them. Special moves. Now, special moves are used as functions, and I don't know if you've ever had anyone tell you that, but let me explain. When you use special moves, you use them with a purpose. Of course, they're cool to do, they're, they're cool to perform, they're cool to execute, but they serve a purpose that people may not properly utilize. Take this Cammy, for example. She's primarily using specials, but there's a reason to use certain specials at certain times. When you use a dive kick, you want to use it as a neutral tool to bait and punish people pressing buttons when they're trying to get their turn back and to try and get into someone's space very quickly. You want to use cannon spike as an anti-air and as a combo ender. Spiral arrow is also a combo fodder tool. Some other common specials that have functions that people aren't familiar with is reuse Tatsumaki. Geef has Tundra Storm. DJ has his Sway. And Marisa has her Superman Punch. Fireball Pressure. Now with my last comment about Marisa's uh, Superman punch, you can see that fireball pressure, especially at low levels, are um, a danger to people who don't know how to get around them. You're probably wondering, how do you properly handle them? At a max distance, you'll, you'll see a lot of people, especially Ryu's just throwing out Hadoukens, Ken's do it too, um, but how do you deal with this? When you're at a max distance, you want to parry so you don't lose your drive gauge, which is especially important because you don't want to go into burnout and end up losing from ship damage. Um, at lower levels, you can pretty much use drive impact once you're somewhat close because most people aren't thinking to bait for that when they're throwing out fireballs. Um, you can jump from a pretty far distance too once you have an idea of what your aerial buttons are. Um, you don't have to jump in point blank or, or hop twice because people will do that and end up getting anti-air. And almost every character, if not every character, has some anti-fireball tech. Okay, I'll, let the, I'll let the video roll through this one so you can see what I'm talking about.
appropriate punishes. Let's say your opponent does something irresponsible and they're left wide open. What do you do? There are two things that should come to your mind when you're deciding on what kind of combo that you want to do. Do you want to go for positioning, corner, or do you want to optimize on your damage? For instance, if your opponent misses their DP, if they're in the corner, you want to hit some of your biggest buttons and start doing all your fancy combos with all your links and extensions and cancels and, and supers. Uh, to especially if you if you have full resources and you know how to manage your combos properly, once they're at like 65, 60%, you can end the round from one mistake. Just a tip that I have for some of you guys, uh, your biggest combos you may start with a jump, but you shouldn't rely on jumping. Uh, they may work at these levels and they may work on you, but once you start getting a familiarity of the, the range in which your opponent wants to jump, especially if you're throwing fireballs, you can sort of bait them out and, and you know, punish people for trying to get a combo started. Um, I, I say that because it, it is nice to, to start with max damage, but you can get a, a good amount of damage from grounded buttons as well light buttons um, I had a very hard time identifying opponents who were actually using them which to me seems kind of weird you know, at the higher level you, you see jabs being used to check drive rushes or counter throws or um, beat certain wake up options and whatnot but down here it seems like everyone is throwing haymakers and roundhouses and sweeps and uppercuts as much as they can um, it, it, it seems like people don't know that your your light buttons can lead you to a, a great amount of damage if used in, in great situations. Um, so here's a situation with Ken, because everybody uses everybody's used Ken, everybody's touched Ken, everybody knows about Jinrai kicks, um, and everybody knows how to check them. But I wanted to reiterate how properly using your uh, light buttons can interrupt Ken's pressure, especially with this, this move in particular. More importantly, you can mash light buttons to keep yourself safe uh, instead of hitting a button and then being super negative and eating a combo for it. And with proper timing and spacing, you can even make negative, what would be negative options safe as long as you uh, properly uh, use your light buttons to space yourself out. Drive parry. And parrying in general, um, I didn't see a lot of players using this with a purpose. It was more of used as an, I'm not gonna block this, I'm gonna parry instead, hoping I get a perfect parry so I can take my turn back. Um, using parry instead of blocking is not the, it, it, it is an answer and it can sometimes be right, but it should be used with a purpose, you know, especially on wake up. If you notice you're waking up into your opponent's buttons because they're trying to keep their okie, they want to keep their pressure on you, you know, tap parry on wake up is great. But other than that, um, you shouldn't just throw it out there because it has a weakness to being thrown. Um, it should be used sparingly or situationally. When I was playing Gimmer from Video Game Boot Camp, I noticed that in the first couple of rounds, first couple of matches, he was using Wake Up Parry a lot. Wake Up Perfect Parry, and it was kicking my ass. So I ended up adapting, I baited it out, I started doing damage, stealing my turn back. And this is what I mean um, if you're using it uh, just every time, if you're using it as the only option. Um, you can use it to your advantage. You know, there are definitely situations where you want to even hold the parry button, especially if you have low health um, during someone else's drive impact in the corner. You know, that, that would definitely be um, a situation where you would want to use it. It's important to note that when you hop online in a ranked match, in a casual match on the battle hub or in a custom room, the people that you're playing against are people. 
Now that can be a boon or a bane to you, but you shouldn't always assume that they're going to fall for your Street Fighter 2 special jump in sweep combo. Uh, people aren't willingly going to get hit. They're not programmed to get hit, you know, so um, it's important to think that what you do is to be better than a person as opposed to winning against an NPC um, that's programmed to lose. You know, your world tour is, you know, programmed to make you a better player, but you also have to understand that those aren't players. They're, they're NPCs. Uh, they're going to be a little bit smarter. You know, they're not going to be the smartest, but they are going to be just a little bit smarter. So keep that in the back of your mind when you're, you know, repetitively doing the same thing over and over again, people will end up adapting. Pertaining to drive impact, um, you'll definitely see it used a lot more down here. Um, used as a defensive option by players because they don't want to block. Um, which is okay, you know, like, it, you know, their freedom of expression, you should be able to press the button that you want to press how you want to press it. However, once you realize that you're countering your other players drive impact buttons, um, it's important to maximize the damage that you get from that. Well, I, I saw a lot of throws. I saw a lot of, you know, DPs and there are no wrong answers as long as you're doing damage, but there are definitely better answers when you want to do damage. Um, so make sure you you get a combo that do, deals at least like, I don't know, 20, 25 percent damage. It doesn't have to use all your meter. You don't have to drive rush cancel or anything like that, but you definitely want to take advantage of the opportunity where your opponent literally can't fight back and you can do whatever you want. So I know I visited uh, as part of one of my first tips as to block, but one of the other tips I had is to block low. And it, it I just want to harp on that because it seems like some people will learn to block, but it's like they don't understand that their feet are also a, another option of getting hit. So they end up blocking uh, a mid or an overhead or a high, but when it's time to block their feet, they just, they end up falling because they don't know how to block low. I'm not, I'm not sure what that is. I don't know what World Tour taught you guys, but make sure you, you block low when it's appropriate because more often than not, you will take more damage from a low than you will from an overhead unless they're jumping. And jumps are super telegraphed, so you can block low naturally unless you're trying to walk back. But um, unless you see a jump in, you, you shouldn't really be too focused on stand blocking. And my last tip that I have is uh, mashing at inopportune times. More often than not, I caught somebody pressing buttons on their wake up just because they wanted to press buttons. Um, and again, they didn't pay $60 to block. I get it, you wanna hit your buttons, but I'm here because I want you to hit buttons that work instead of just hitting buttons because you can. And especially on wake up, you know, at, at this level, I don't think anybody's gonna be throw looping you or you know, hitting you with, with, you know, shimmies or anything like that. So it's not something that you really need to worry about um, pressing a button, you know, work on your defensive options right here because that will carry you higher than your offensive options. So to close this video out, um, you know, watching this video, I don't expect you to become the greatest, you know, I, you're not gonna become Daigo or, you know, Giuno or Sejam or you know, anybody that you can think, Mena, you know, Punk, you're not gonna be anybody at a high level, at a high functioning level from watching this video, but this video does serve as a baseline to get there. You know, I want, I want you to watch this video and take notes, mental notes or physical notes, um, or rewatch the video. But um, 
it takes time to understand what Street Fighter 6 is as a fighting game. It takes time to understand the character that you want to play with. It takes time to understand the other characters that you're playing against and their mistakes. So, you know, what it, What I'm hoping for this video is that it inspires you to, to take some time aside and create a plan for yourself. You know, you're, you're gonna mess up combos every now and then. You're gonna, you know, drop stuff or you're gonna lose, you know, you're gonna be overwhelmed. You're gonna get hit with things that you haven't seen. But as long as you're learning throughout this journey um, and you're getting better, there's no such thing as a waste of time. Um, you know, don't stress it, you, you, especially around these ranks, you're just starting out, you're just really starting to learn how to function as a, a fighting game player, and that's cool, you know, just remember along the way it's all about learning and making sure that you know more than your opponent does, so don't give up, you'll overcome your mistakes. I'll see you in Masters.